Hi, everybody. This is Dana Lane for SBR Picks. This is our last video preview of the National Hockey League season upcoming. Uh, today, we're going to focus on the Pacific Division. We've already done the, the other three divisions, and of course, the Pacific is the last one remaining. And it's going to be an interesting division. I mean, this is the new darlings of the NHL is certainly Connor McDavid, who many people believe is the best player in the National Hockey League now. Uh, the Edmonton Oilers, at least in my opinion, are probably going to win uh, the Pacific Dish Division this year. And then the Los Angeles Kings, a team that was absent from the playoffs last season, I think are going to make a return visit as well. Uh, the Calgary Flames have been talked about as, as having one of the best cores in the league, defensive cores in the league. The Anima Anaheim Ducks look to build on last year's momentum as they went deep into the playoffs in 2016-17. In and, of course, the Arizona Coyotes and the Vegas Golden Knights are – uh, teams that are probably going to battle each other for the bottom of the of the division. But it is exciting for the National Hockey League to have a 31st team in the league, and it's very exciting when that team is called Las Vegas, or Vegas in this case. All future numbers that we'll be going through, we'll be taking a look at uh, future odds. All future numbers will be taken from our friends at Bovada, and you can find Bovada at uh, www.bovada.com and all their uh, that that website is rated A plus by Sportsbook Review, so you can make sure that when you you place a bet there, that you could be comfortable knowing that uh, you're going to get paid uh, when you want your money back. So let's try to get paid. Let's go down each team, uh, team by team. Here, I'll give you the future odds and just a quick synopsis uh, of what I think will happen with each team this year. Uh, first of all, we'll start with the Anaheim Ducks. They're at fourteen to one. It looks like right now. Uh, it seems like a cynical point of view, uh, but sometimes I expect teams to take a little bit of a step back after completing an emotional season, regardless if that season ends in, in a Stanley Cup victory or not. Now, hear me out on this a little bit. The Ducks lost in the conference finals last season uh, to the Nashville Predators in six games. They did so on the back of a, of a defenseman or many defensemen that had career years uh, in many cases. Cam Fowler, uh, a guy who has 11 goals, 28 assists, he was a plus seven, heads that list, heads the list of guys in that category. But let's be honest about Fowler. I mean, do we really expect that kind of year from him again? I don't consider him a great defenseman. I know a lot of people sometimes they 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 think about what they just saw, and certainly Anaheim's effort in the in the postseason was something to to make a note about. But I don't always get so excited that. Um, that that is going to equate into success into the next season. So you know, look a lot, look at a lot of these Ducks defensemen, and and ask yourself, do I think that they're going to have that same type of year again? Um, and look, no matter even if they play the same defensively, the Ducks are the Ducks have the same issues that they've had for years. I mean, where is uh, where is this scoring coming from? And for me, if I'm Randy Carlisle, I mean, that's my biggest worry. And that's been the biggest worry in Anaheim for years. And I don't I don't see where that is going to change. Um, they are returning basically the same team from last season. And they have to generate offense to have success. And, and, and because I don't know where that offense is coming from and because I think their defensemen are going to step back, and, and certainly – and the league today, I mean, Nashville has showed you that, you know, you want to generate a little offense from your defenseman. And I'm not, I'm just not sure that Anaheim is, is going to be able to do that. So the Ducks are a wild card team, um, but the defensive reliability and productivity will be a little less reliable than it was last year. Los Angeles Kings uh, coming in looks like a 22 to 1. In a world of what have you done for me lately, the Kings were once easily a team that you would pencil in as a playoff spot. Uh, now they seem to be easily forgotten. And I think this is the year in which the Kings kind of regain their form, return to the playoffs, but I think it's going to be close. And what they're doing is that they are slowly turning the soil over as you know some new blood comes into the organization. We have John Stevens who took over for Daryl Sutter after five plus seasons and two Stanley Cup rings. He comes over to kind of give a fresh voice to, to the organization. Uh, you combine that with a, a, a better and healthier seasons uh, from the Kings core, and I'm talking about Drew Doughty, 
Uh, even though Dowdy's offensive numbers were the same, I, I, I mean, you'd be hard pressed to watch him all year and think that that was the same Drew Dowdy. Anze Kopitar, Jonathan Quick, all those those two especially have to have breakout seasons again. I mean, not even breakout seasons, just get back to what you were doing. Jonathan Quick certainly has to stay healthy. Uh, his his uh, win loss record can't look like eight five and two this year for the Kings to be successful. Uh, the biggest a flaw of the Kings, just like the Ducks, was their inability to score last season. And I think that uh, even if they can get, I, I know a lot of people are are kind of leading, lead, leaning on uh, Adrian Kempe to come in and give them some offensive punch. Uh, I think that's a little bit of a risky thought because honestly, you don't know uh, what his evolution is going to be. And you know, he's never been a guy that's put up big numbers, so I'm not really sure. You know. Probably since he was a teenager, he didn't put up big numbers. So I'm not really sure where that thought process comes from. Uh, but this will be his first full N- NHL season uh, after two solid seasons in Ontario. So they are relying on him to give them some scoring punch. Uh, he is going to be a contributor. I don't know if he's going to be a major contributor, uh, but I think he's a guy that's going to give you um, some quality minutes and some quality scoring, and he's probably going to be. Uh, on the left side of the third line. I expect the Kings to open it up just a little bit more, a little bit more confidence in their netminder. Uh, I think they'll be a little bit more of a wide open team. And that's going to allow them to find some some quality scoring chances. They didn't have a lot of problems getting the puck on the net last year, but I think, you know, kind of like the Boston Bruins where there was a lot of rubber going towards the net, but the quality of the shots was lacking. And I think that that's something that the, the Kings and the Bruins uh, both have in common last season. If the if the pieces all do come together, I think John Stevens' team will be back in the playoffs, but it's going to be close. Uh, Edmonton Oilers, uh, they right now they're at 10 to 1. This is one instance, guys, and I know I talk about this all the time, but this is one instance where I'm going to feed into what I just saw should lead to bigger rewards for this team. Uh, this is an Edmonton, te- Edmonton team that I think will win the Pacific Division uh, after just missing out on that honor by three points last season. I've always been partial to teams that have exceptional players, and we know that Connor McDavid is certainly an exceptional player. Just like last season when Chris Letang went out for the Penguins, I wasn't a guy that jumped off the bandwagon because they still had Sidney Crosby, and they still had an explosive end offense and there here comes Jake Gensel to come in and add to that a guy that nobody thought would so I I'm not as apt to jump off of teams that are losing defensemen here and there and of course you know don't get me wrong Latang's a great defenseman but I still thought that they had the offensive firepower to 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 overcome that deficiency same thing with the Edmonton Oilers they have a great player and I love putting my money and my support behind great players he is a once in a generation talent Uh, he is phenomenal in all three zones and and even though this is going to be his second full season uh, his his numbers right now indicate that that he will be a hall of famer and that's that's really not even a, a, a doubt about that. And I say second full season because, of course, his season before last he was hurt. If there's any negatives about this team, and it doesn't necessarily mean it has to be a negative. It just means it's it's the point of their team that I'm a little apprehensive about. Leon Dreisaitl in the offseason, of course, uh, signed a brand-new eight-year deal worth $68 million. I just want to see how that affects him as a player. And also I want to see where Cam Talbot is right now. I mean, this is a guy, you know, if he's required to make 70 plus starts again, are we confident in his ability to uh, produce in the way that he did last season? I mean, is he he had 42 wins last year? Are they going to need that again from him? We'll see. Questions will be answered uh, shortly for sure, but there's nothing alarming about this team uh, that I think that it's going to prevent me from saying they're going to win the Pacific. And, I, and of course, I think they're going to go deep in the playoffs. San Jose Sharks, interesting team at 22 to 1, as I see them right now. Uh, and of course, a lot of people, you know, it's kind of like the Chicago Blackhawks thing. They want to. They just want to put them in a hole and they want to start burying them. But as long as you have a strong blue line, 
you're going to be in most hockey games. You're going to be not only a factor in the regular season, which they certainly were, but you're also going to be a factor in the postseason, which last year they certainly were not. But that blue line is certainly still still gives me enough confidence to to back them. They do arguably return the best defensive core in the National Hockey League. They they return the best defenseman in the National Hockey League, and, and Brent Burns. Uh, 76 point guy, a plus 19 guy. Uh, he'll be paired up with Paul Martin, of course. And then that top pairing is as good as anybody in the league right now. The Sharks finished fifth in goals allowed last season, third in shots allowed and shots allowed uh, at 27.7 shots uh, per game. If this, you know, guys, if this continues, they will be able to off- to overcome any offensive de- deficiencies that may have followed them from last season. Of course, in the postseason, I mean, offensively, it, they completely dried up. So let's let's see how the residue of that season affects this upcoming one. There has to be some concern in goal. Uh, Martin Jones finished last season losing seven of his last eight games, and I and I think it's fair to say that when Martin Jones started to go backwards. I think that's when the San Jose Sharks went backwards as well. But if, if Jones rebounds and has a, 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 you know, a Martin Jones season, the San Jose Sharks are going to be right in the mix. Doug Wilson, the general manager decided not to make any significant changes after losing Patrick Marlowe and David Schlemko. Uh, but they still, to me, have enough defense defense to be a, a 95 to hundred point season. And that is going to mean the playoffs. Uh, Arizona Coyotes, hundred, hundred, the one, 102-1 right now. Um, they they were a team that was extremely active in the postseason, uh, as anybody else was, shedding their label of – or trying to shed their label as a losing franchise. Uh, in comes goaltender Antti Ranta. Uh, Derek Stepan also is coming in with Nicholas Jalmerson. Um, nice, nice additions for sure. Some questions with Ranta, of course. Uh, he's going to be in a situation where this is going to be the first time where he's going to take the full load. Let's see how he responds to that. Uh, this is a year uh, also that the Coyotes are looking for some production out of Dylan Strom. I mean, he's played seven. He played seven games with the Yotes last year, but spent the majority of the season of the season in the America, uh, the uh, Ontario Hockey League, rather completely lit it up there. But now that that what he's done at the lower level now has to equate into NHL success. Uh, he is penciled in as their second line starter, so it is throwing them uh, right into the right into the fire right away. Uh, and they hope, and if they are going to have any success, they are going to have to get offensive production from Dylan Strom. Um, look, in a couple years, I think this is going to change. I think Arizona is counting on a lot of young players to mature at the same time. And for me, if you're counting slash crossing your fingers or hoping, that's not a team that I'm ready to uh, give any uh, give any financial backing to, if you will. Uh, Calgary Flames come in at 25 to one, and of course, the last couple of days, uh, the Flames find themselves in the same boat basically as they were last season. Uh, a new goaltender and plenty of speculation in, in the last few days about their future in Alberta. Uh, Ken King, the president of the Calgary Flames, came out and announced that the team basically has ended talks with the city about getting a new building. And, of course, they referenced uh, the Edmonton Oilers, a team that does have a new building, and they're basically saying, look, you know, we want to be able to compete. And basically what they're saying is we want to be able to compete with the Edmonton Oilers. And so they want a new building. The city is not uh, has not either been forthcoming in their efforts to make that happen, despite um, the media reports that they were ready to and have been for uh, for at least a year now. Uh, but now uh, Ken King came out and said that's that's done. So I'm not sure what kind of shadow that's going to cast cast on the franchise uh, when it comes to play when it comes to on the ice. Uh, but even if it has a small effect. Uh, it won't be a positive one for sure. And, and more importantly, how are the fans going to react to this? And uh, look, it, it is conceivable that the that the Flames could be on the move uh, once again. They do, on the ice, rely on Mike Smith. Mike Smith comes over, of course, from, from the Coyotes. Mike Smith, hey, look, if you look at his numbers, he's 19 and – 19 and 26 save percentage, a little bit lower than what we would want it to be. Um, 
His goals against average at just under three is certainly um, it's it's larger than we want, but we also have to take into account that he's coming from the Arizona Coyotes. So whatever that means, now he's going to play in front of a much better defensive core. Um, so you would expect his numbers to be better. Unfortunately for Mike, over his history, injuries have been an issue. So um, if the Calgary, if he has issues this year, I think Calgary's in, in a real real bind, especially um, uh, especially uh, as in their net. Uh, I'm sure they're hoping that that Smith has a a much better season than he's ever had in Arizona, and he will have to in order for the Calgary Flames to go deep. He missed 13 games last year with injury. There was one one game to illness, so uh, that kind of has has followed him uh, during his career. So Mike Smith is really the guy that the Calgary Flames are leaning on. Uh, an organization that's been through six goaltenders since 2015, 2016, both starters and backups. Flame strengths will be their defensive core, but I do foresee another fourth place finish in the Pacific Division. Vancouver Canucks 100 to one from our friends at Bovada. I think this is a more likely. It's a more much more likely that the Canucks are going to compete for the services of Rossman Stalin. Uh, next year's highly touted prospect and in, in next year's draft prospect, uh, then they will a postseason spot. Uh, I took it took Vancouver six years to basically say we're turn we're going to start this thing over again. We are in a rebuilding mode mode because let's let's be honest. Since 2011, since that playoff or the Stanley Cup series against the Boston Bruins, they've been really just trying to put band aids on things. Uh, and going out uh, this year, they did go out and get get a Thomas Vanek, and I'm not sure what kind of a difference that's going to make. But you're adding a 50 goal or 50 point score to your to your team should give them some at least third line stability. Uh, but the truth is, that the prospects that are going to make a real impact are probably a year or two away. They need goal goal scoring. General Manager Jim Benning. Um, Decided it was best to take it on the chin for another season rather than going out and getting a big contract at the, as they've done in the past. Uh, and believe me, Vegas and Vancouver will battle for last place in the Pacific Division. Which brings me to the brand new franchise in the National Hockey League, and that is the Vegas Golden Knights at 100 to 1, which you would have figured that they would be. Uh, no matter what happens, guys, in, in the entertainment capital of the world this season, Make no mistake that the Vegas faithful are thrilled to have their first professional sports franchise here in town. Um, I think a reasonable expectation, reasonable expectation for George McPhee's team this year is just to play hard, look good losing. They will probably, I mean, never say never, but honestly, they probably will lose the majority of their games, but they have to look good doing it. And, they, and it has to give the Vegas faithful some um, some confidence that they are moving forward, which I think that will absolutely be a no-brainer because I think that that's the type of team that they're going to have. Um, the reality is, though, even with Mark Andre Fleury, a guy that's got three Stanley Cup rings, uh, be, you know, he does not bring. You know, we love the name, but the numbers don't match our passion for the name as much as it should. And he played with the Stanley Cup champion last year. And his uh, goals against were over three. I expect his goals against to be in that three-five range this year. Save percentage around ninety percent, and and that's really what you're probably going to expect from Mark. Let's not get the expectations too high. He's not going to steal games with forty-five saves a night. That's just not going to happen. Uh, the question mark with this team certainly uh, when you're talking about offensively is what are they going to get out of uh, Vadim Shipashov? Uh, the $4.5 million Russian that they signed in the offseason. He was their key acquisition. Um, it, look, <laughs> I have no – I've seen the guy skate probably four times. I've seen him in person four times. I don't know what you're going to get out of him. If I think he's going to come over and be a, a 50 to 60 guy, that would be one thing. Um, but the more realistic expectation for, for Shipashoff is for him to be a 45 to 55-point guy. And if he can do that, I think George McPhee will be very happy with him with another year left on his contract. And, of course, the the biggest positive to this team is the addition of Gerard Gallant. And in the last time that we saw Gerard Gallant, he was getting picked up in a cab that he allegedly had to hail himself after getting let go from the Florida Panthers in the middle of 
Raleigh, North Carolina. So I do like the fact that he comes in with a little bit of a chip on his shoulder. Um, regardless of what he says, he'll never say it publicly, but any competitor is going to know that those pictures of him getting that cab were the lasting image that most of us have had of Gerard Gallant. And I know that as a competitor, his fire has got to burn uh, inside his belly. So there's going to be growing pains for the Vegas Golden Knights for sure. Um, I think we thought that uh, offensively, they were going to be a lot poorer than they than they appear to be, and I thought maybe defensively they would look would look a little bit better than they appear to be as well. They will uh, only carry eight defensemen, so there is going to have to be some movement with the eleven that they have currently, and that will play itself out there in training camp. Not a team that I would get on for a future wager, uh, but uh, maybe a team that I would look on. For a season total, which I know is at about 70, 70, 70 and a half right now, depending on the spot. So that might be something you want to look at if you want to enjoy Vegas Golden Knight hockey. So here's my uh, predicted order of finish for the for the season. I like Vegas uh, finishing eighth. I think it's going to be close. V uh, Vancouver seventh. Arizona sixth. I have the Kings coming in at fifth. Calgary fourth. Anaheim third the Sharks second, and the Edmonton Oilers winning the Pacific Division. I'm Dana Lane for SBR Picks. You can find me at Dana Lane Sports. And, of course, we'll be with you each and every day here on SBR, giving you uh, winners just like we did the last two years. So best of luck, and we'll see you in a, in a couple of weeks. Thanks for watching. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to our channel. Now we've put a lot of work into producing all these free videos, so please help us out and keep all our content free for you forever by simply liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. Now not to mention a visit to our industry leading website will warm the hearts of all our SBR employees, especially myself. Now the links are over there to the left, uh, so do check those out. Thanks for watching.